Hey there, welcome to the 46th episode of Under the Radar. I am stoked to be back and um, kind of on a roll here. It's been a while since I've pumped out episodes like weekly. So um, anyway, I've had a couple sales on Slave to Servant LPs um, and they are in the web, web store at slavetoservant.com. You can check that out if you'd like. But I'm gonna bust into this episode. This is this is a repeat uh, band. In episode 12, I covered a band called Split Habit, and today I'm going to cover another release by the band. Today I'm going to cover their full-length album, Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is, released by Double Zero Records, owned by Mike Flemley in 2004, and produced by Sean O'Keefe. Now, this one's a special one to me, and this is a band that, I feel like they just got ignored or like maybe this should have just come out like right when it was done instead of like shopping it they should have just like pushed it or something I don't know but there was talks of like lots of talks about uh, labels in this band at one point they were in talks with like Triple Crown Records and um, I think Fueled by Ramen for a minute um, but I, if I was to say like the deciding factor I think time and just trend right like when trends change um it kind of pushes out old things like this band had this pogo-y pop punk but really well sophisticated songwriting you know it was really good and they toured their butts off they did a lot of work um great guys i think that emo like with the the um mainstream success of emo being kind of melded into everything like pop punk and um, indie rock and all those kinds of things. Uh, I think that this band just didn't really have a chance on this record uh, a year later. Um, they recorded this record with Sean O'Keefe um, at the same time, I think it was the same time frame that like Fall Out Boy was doing Take This To Your Grave and um, Spittlefield was doing Remember Right Now. Yeah, I was really excited to hear this thing. Like I said in the first episode, like I play a ton of shows with this band in Midwest Blue and I truly thought that probably the best label for this band would have been at least in like the early 2000, like 2002, if this record had come out on like drive through records, like it would have been perfect for that label, you know, with like bands like Alistair and Homegrown and all that kind of stuff, like Newfound Glory, you know. Anyway, I don't want to sound like I'm diminishing this record because it's a great record and uh, it was just sadly ignored like many other great records and uh, hence me being able to cover it on Under the Radar. So let's bust into the first track on this record, really catchy song called Rebel. song very well crafted uh, I think the production Chano Keefe killed it another equally infectious song is Lady Killer <laughs> Not to play. 
such a banger. I I remember uh, playing, like I said, many, many, many shows with Split Habit um, in both Dorm Life and Midwest Blue. And this band had so much energy live. They were so tight as a trio, like a power trio. Dare I say it, I think they were just as good as Green Day in some ways when I watched them live. Um, as a trio, like to, to be able to sound so like full and tight and I don't know, this band just killed it. But this this song right here that I'm about to play uh, was a song that that wasn't on any of their releases yet. They had a couple EPs out, had some comp tracks out that they had on their table, but this one was so fun to watch live. A song called Higher Mathematics. <laughs> Another song that I actually got wind of early because the band, when they were shopping this record during like 2002, I think this happened in 2003, like right after the record was done or as it was finishing um, completion, they had a song that made the compilation Underground Screams uh, released by Asian Man Records. So they didn't have Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is out yet, but they made this awesome like comp with a ton of different bands from all over the place that Mike Park put out from Asian Man. And the song was also included obviously on the record, but the song was called Miss Vandersanden. Can you stay here within an arm's length? Paced song, really uh, catchy track. Very much enjoyed that one. I think that one actually aired on 94.7's The Zone, like their local zone on Sunday nights. I think that that aired at one point. 
But probably the most notable song on here is a cover song, which I think they killed. They made it a little bit different of a tempo than the original, but they put their own split habit spin on Hall & Oates' Maneater. watching them do that live. Actually, I remember them covering, I think it was like uh, Big Red or they used to cover like commercial themes and stuff. And it was so funny. Like they, they were really great live. They, they put on a great show. As I had said, this record was released by Double Zero Records. And I don't think, I don't think I covered any Double Zero releases yet. Although I have at least one more um, coming down the pipe. So um, in case you didn't know, Double Zero Records is owned by Mike Falimli from Smoking Popes, and he was in Duval and This Is Me Smiling. He was actually also in Alkaline Trio, played on there from Here to Infirmary Record, which I covered in a previous episode. But at the time, Split Habit signed to Double Zero, and so did a bunch of other bands, Amazing Transparent Man and Ryan's Hope, and um, I think there was one more, um, or at least one more was, I think Best Days Behind was supposed to sign and they were in the process and then it just didn't happen. But, um, anyway, this is probably like, I don't know, I think Double Zero Records released really good quality music. Like the, the recording quality of everything was really good. The aesthetic of the art was very cool. Um, the first Duval releases were, were on Double Zero. I think I had talked about that in the Duval episode uh, that I had covered in the past. Another reason why this record was just like so special to me was because we played their record release show for this al album at the Metro. And um, I thought I would share uh, a little story. So Dan Lasik, the drummer for Y Intercept, who I also covered um, in episode 10, I think, Dan Lasik and then Ryan Mazalewski, our bass player from Midwest Blue, uh, they were very drunk backstage. Um, you know, there was, I think, five bands on this release show at the Metro, and it was like, I think we maybe even opened or like went second or something, but there's a lot, lot to sit through, and there's free beer in the back at the backstage area, and um, Ryan was always known to drink a lot of beer at shows and um, get a little crazy. We always call them shenanigans. But anyway, I, I can't remember if I actually witnessed this happen or not. I just witnessed the, I definitely remember the after effects though of it, the results of Travis, uh, the singer of Split Habit, and I felt quite bad. So I guess what happened was Ryan and Dan were really drunk and they brought, I think they brought, I don't know if they brought beer or if it was water. But I don't know what made, I don't know if it was like they decided to pour it on him like intentionally or if they just spilt beer all over him. Like, I, I feel like it was done somewhat intentionally as a joke, like, ha ha buddy, like we're all friends, like we're just messing with you. But it was like, while Travis was singing and playing and like whatever, whatever it was got all over him, all over his bass. And we went, like I walked down to the backstage area and 
mm, I remember Travis coming down like just steaming, like just oozing anger and hatred, like for the situation, and taking his, you know, um, cordless um, bass, you know, like attachment off, and um, just like he was done. Like we were, we were, we were. I think like Ryan and and Dan were like dead to him, and anybody who was associated wasn't wasn't looking so good. I felt quite bad and. Unfortunately, there are many stories like this that have occurred over the years with uh, Mr. Shenanigans from Midwest Blue. Uh, but that's one that I remember. It was pretty unfortunate. So Split Habit toured on this record after that release show. And they, one of the bands that played uh, along with Is Tall As Lions, which they were had just released their first record that was recorded by Sean O'Keefe too. And they were amazing. I knew that that band from the get-go had, had something very special um, but S Split Habit and Amazing Transparent Man some of the members uh, were all in like Mike Flumley's like touring band I, I can't remember what the name of the band was it was like Mike Flumley and the Turn or something I don't remember but so Mike, Mike Flumley went on tour with Split Habit to promote this and then Split Habit like did Warp Tour and a bunch of other stuff and I think they just got really burnt out and by the time I had seen them next, I was playing with them in Dorm Life, which at the time, this was at least a year later, a little more than a year later, and um, they had dropped this DVD and they had some new demos that they were releasing. They had this amazing song called Kill the Spider. Um, but anyway, it just seemed like they had reached their end and not long after that, they just called it quits. And I feel really bad because this, this band is like so, talented uh they were so like well crafted in their songwriting and uh, their live show energy and their work ethic like they're a band that a lot of us like kind of looked up to like at least of the few bands that like in our little scene um and I, it's unfortunate that they didn't get their break because this is a this one especially is a very catchy record um so anyway i hope you enjoyed this there was also some really funny um like hidden track stuff going on on this like they made like a hip hop song that shit for the year 2000 moving your ass if the bass keeps pounding in with the new hip hop sensations call up all your local radio stations it's in with the new and out with the old and this is how the story is supposed to go we got the dope rhymes we got the dope lingo all up in your face with a new hit single we can't be wrong cuz it feels so right we keep the party moving like all damn night Quite enjoyable, that song. Uh, anyway, what I did want to say was the first episode that I covered on them with their Biting My Lip EP was recorded with a different guitar player. I guess that was Johnny Smoke. And I didn't know Johnny Smoke. Um, I think he like maybe commented on that video long ago. But um, Frankie took over like not long after that EP came out. And Frankie, to me, Frankie was just their, their guitar player and backup vocalist. So. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to give a shout out to Frankie, to Chris. Chris was so good to us and always helping us out. And Travis, such a talented songwriter and singer. So, um, you know, props to you guys for this record. Um, if you get a chance, you could probably find it on Discogs. Uh, I don't know how many were pressed. I know that Double Zero put a lot of money into this and ended up kind of, I think this is kind of what broke the bank on Double Zero was the faith in this and just not have anything come to fruition with it on like a commercial level. So anyway, um, in the next episode, I'll be covering another uh, double zero band. And um, yeah, in other news, I, uh, like I said earlier, I have been selling records at gigs for Escape Babylon and um, it's quite exciting. I've been actually selling both Escape Babylon by a Slave to Servant and my cover album by Handsome Young Ladies, uh, which feature Jesse Sprinkle on drums on both of these, and he engineered them as well. I've been just selling them for like $50. Um, otherwise, they're $30 a piece. Um, but I'm thinking about like putting a bundle together on the website. But for now, check out um, the website if you can, slavetoservant.com slash store. Get yourself a shirt, get a Singularity CD, stickers, or, uh, or the vinyl record. I will be back soon with a new episode, and uh, until then, thank you for your time.